Everything I want to do is illegal. And coincidentally, that is the name of a book that I recently read, and I highly recommend it. So I want to talk about it in this video. So what is this book about? First off, Everything I Want to Do is Illegal by Joel Saladin. You can see it down there. Uh, based boomer Joel Saladin. What is this book actually about? Now, first off, even before I, I mention the topic of the book, I'll just say this is one of those rare books you should read just because it's written by someone who actually knows what they're writing about. Now, that sounds like a weird thing to say. I mean, who writes books about stuff, you know, they don't actually know about? Well, most books, a lot of books out there nowadays are like written by journalists or they're written by people who are sort of like voyeuristically looking at other people's lives and trying to understand them. This is actually written by the kind of guy who like knows intimately the detail, not just like in terms of knowledge. He has a very direct exposure to everything he talks about. Now, what does he talk about in this book? Well, he, Joel Saladin is a farmer. He has a... A farm, what is it, Polyface Farms. Um, now, you might be totally uninterested in farming. Uh, I mean, if you are, you should read this book. In fact, maybe you already have, but even if you aren't, you should still read this book. Okay, so first off, what, what is the title about? Everything I want to do is illegal. What kind of clickbait title is that? Well, um, so the gist of the book is basically um, him talking about his, ex he's not just a farmer, but he's a sort of traditional pre-industrial farmer, uh, you might call him an organic farmer. I mean, not exactly the same thing. I mean, he sort of has his own thing. He explains it in the book. But, um, you know, he's basically talking about how difficult it is to just do everyday things as a farmer. How basically everything from, like, in terms of safety regulations, in terms of uh, tax code, in terms of just uh, zoning laws and stuff like that, um, all of this stuff conspires basically to make farming illegal or impossible for most people who actually do it. Um, and what's happened is that farming, and of course other things as well, but I mean, he's, he's talking about farming, but you know, it's gotten to the point where it's nearly impossible for a non-corporation to, you know, work, you know, actually make ends meet. And he explains why, and he explains why it's been so frustrating for him. Now I will go ahead and say this book, I'll go into some of his examples, but this book is uh, triggering. You know, this book will like get you mad uh, because every chapter is like frustration because basically, you know, the chapters are divided by sort of topics, sometimes food types, sometimes, you know, there's a chapter on, uh, you know, insurance, chapter on taxes, all these kind of uh, stuff like this. But every single one of them, he goes through these stories from his many years of farming and a lot of them are just so frustrating, the kind of things he has to deal with. But um, just to give you a, a sort of, uh, I guess, general idea. Um, and I read this book a little bit ago, so if I get some details wrong, just double check the book. But I'll explain the gist of some of the things he talks about. So take, for example, uh, bacon. Okay, I think there's a whole chapter on bacon, in fact. You know, one of the things he notes is one time, you know, someone asked him, okay, you guys sell all, you know, you guys sell ham and all this stuff. Why don't you sell bacon? Okay, you can make it. And what he goes into is if he wanted to sell bacon, for example, we like to think that, you know, if you have pigs, you can process them, you can make bacon out of them. Uh, but one of the things about the regulatory structure is that if you have a farm and you want to make bacon, you have to, of course, cure that meat or smoke it or whatever. Um, uh, so you have to basically process that meat. And in terms of zoning laws, for example, you like the processing plant on which you would, uh, you know, make that bacon, you know, cure that bacon, however you're going to do it, that has to be legally, like in terms of zoning laws, that has to be distinct from like the agricultural land that you're on. So in order to make bacon, you have to, you know, tr basically transport your pigs somewhere else, somewhere that's zoned differently so you can process it. And of course, that processing plant, you can't just make a building, you can't just do it out, you have to have uh, you know, it has to be a building that's up to code. It has to have bathrooms. It has to have the right doorknobs. It has to have the right uh, luminosity of lights. And of course, in order to get there, um, you have to buy particular refrigerated cars that, you know, can be ensured that they keep bacon at this particular... I mean, you can't just like drive next door to the building right next to you and drop off the pigs. You have to have everything, you know, everything is meticulously legislated, okay? So that's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, that sounds like a minor nitpick. Okay, that's a weird thing in bacon. Um, but that's basically how the entire thing is. 
Um, there's a part where, you know, he wants to sell beef in, I think it's Washington, D.C. And in order to transport it over state lines, he has to find a federal uh, inspection facility. So he actually ends up, he's in Virginia, I think. And he has to transport him to a inspection facility in North Carolina, down south, and then go back up after they've been, uh, you know, tested or whatever, uh, to go back to, you know, Washington, D.C. or wherever they want to sell them. Just weird stuff like that. Um, so the book, as I said, is pretty frustrating. Uh, he goes into it. Now, I will say the number of boomer takes in this book are just like, you know, they're hot and heavy and they start almost immediately. You will enjoy this book. It's it's pretty funny. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm not I'm not like downplaying the guy's takes because some of them are. are I mean, I think he's right. Um, but they're just, I don't know, it's kind of a hokey book, I guess. Um, but so another thing he talks about, uh, let's say taxes, okay? Taxes is something you hear people complain about all the time, but he really, uh, I think, does, does a good job at explaining, like, how onerous these things are. So the way he estimated it, you know, he has something like a 50% tax rate, something ridiculous like that, um, all, all things considered at all levels. Or, you know, there are things like um, inheritance tax. I remember the, the way he put it is, you know, his bar- the, the farm that he's on, his parents bought it, you know, way back in the day for like $50,000 or whatever. And um, over time, of course, tax assessors have come and gradually said, okay, this is worth more and more and more and more um, up to the point where it's like, you know, $2 million or something like that. I forget what it is. And, you know, he mentions that means increasing property taxes, but also there are things like inheritance tax. And the way he put it is, you know, when my mother dies, in order for the government not to take away my farm, I'm just going to have to pay $250,000, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and one of the things I think he mentions, maybe it's in the, uh, the chapter on chicken or something. Well, actually, it's a recurring theme is that, you know, there are all these regulations that I think a lot of people put in place because they have the, they imagine that they're like sticking it to the man. They're sticking it to like, um, you know, you're, you're putting on high taxes because that hurts corporations or something like that. Or you're regulating more because that hurts corporations and that's good or something. I mean, I think this is sometimes the mentality of, of people, but, you know, one of the things he notes is let's say, you know, there's some extra, uh, safety inspection. I think he mentioned for uh, chicken. Maybe it was chicken or beef. I forget what it is. Um, but the way he put it is, in order to comply with it, it would cost about a hundred bucks a day. Okay. Now, for a big company, that's no big deal. Hundred bucks a day, that's no big deal. But at the scale he is, a hundred bucks a day is like all of the day's profit for that beef or chicken. You know, it's basically uh, totally useless. And this is despite. I mean, of course, he's not advocating nasty foods. In fact, one of the themes of his book, um, you know, the kind of farming that he does, which is sort of pre-industrial, is often a lot cleaner, even though it, it often, it doesn't abide by code, it's often a lot cleaner. They, they give the example of he had a chicken processing plant, I think, or plant, that's maybe the wrong way to put it, a building, I guess, uh, where it wasn't like a full building, it was just sort of a covered area, I think, and sort of had open walls or something like that. And, um, you know, eventually the inspector came in and basically complained, you have to, if you want to do this, you have to build this big facility, despite the fact that, you know, other inspectors in the past had, you know, basically said nothing about it. That's the other thing, the sort of arbitrariness of a lot of these rules, uh, different bureaucrats can take them differently and there's nothing you can do. They can fine you a million dollars a day and you basically have to put up with it. But, you know, one time this person came in, told them, oh, your facility, it's open air, it's, it's. You're contaminating the chicken. Uh, particles are going to blow in. Uh, there are going to be all these microbes and stuff. And, um, you know, as it ended up, I think a, a student or, or some maybe a grad student or a professor or something ended up actually comparing the you know microbial co- content of their chicken in the store versus factory chicken in the store. And, of course, um, their chicken was actually, you know, had or the, the factory farm chicken had like 20 times the microbes or something like that. So... A lot of times, uh, I mean, that, and that's sort of the theme of the book. I think he has his own views about farming, uh, which I, I think he's written other books. I haven't read them, but I think he goes into those ideas more there. He sort of has an internet presence, this guy, Joel Saladin. Um, so you can probably look him up. But, um, uh, you know, th- there's the one aspect of him endorsing a more traditional way of farming. Uh, but also, you know, 
the thing he wants to emphasize, I guess, is that just doing things that we think of as being like totally basic uh, are nearly impossible, you know, for him. Or there are all these crazy regulations on, you know, doing all this stuff. And as I said, reading this book, um, it will definitely like make you mad. You'll definitely be, uh, you'll definitely go anti-bureaucrat gang. You'll just like, it'll, um, but it, I highly recommend it because it's one of those, especially those people who have, uh, I, I think, oh, I think a lot of people could get a lot from this book, but if you want to be moved by it, I think there are a lot of people out there who have this kind of engineering mentality when it comes to business in particular, like, um, we have to, you know, regulate all businesses for child safety or, or health or all this stuff. And I think this book really shows you like ground level how that doesn't work and all the negative consequences of it. Um, I mean, he even goes into stuff like, uh, you know, child labor, child labor, where basically he says, you know, he goes into like how easy it would be for, you know, young teenagers to work at his place or, you know, people to come visit. But it's basically illegal, you know, uh, or it's illegal for him to. Um, you know, a school group can't come and pay to look at his farm and be exposed to everything because that would make his, you know, his farm an amusement park and he'd have to pay taxes on that or it's not properly zoned. He doesn't have the required bathrooms, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's just one of those things that you'll, I, I'm just warning you, you'll get mad reading it, but you definitely should read this book. So I highly recommend it. Again, everything I want to do is illegal. That's my recommendation. Go, go, go out and get it. You got it. Oh, yeah. I didn't even really show you the cover. There's the USDA tank rolling in on the farmer. He's just doing his thing. So anyway, check out the book. That's about all I got to say. Uh, you can read more about it. But uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time.